Suppose you have some lamppost. Maybe it's quite tall. Let's, let's say this lamppost is, is 10 feet tall. And, and let's have a person who's going to be walking away from, walking away from this lamppost. So, so here's our person, and we're going to, we're going to say this person, eh, let's make them quite tall too. Let's make this person six feet tall. Now, let's think about what happens. This person is standing here, standing here. You have the lamppost coming down. So you have some light calming down. And, and if it doesn't cut through the person's head, so the light's going to just, just go right, right around the person. And you're going to be left with a shadow, right? So, so here's, here's, let's say, the ground. And we're left with some shadow right here. Let's, let's draw our man's, our man's shadow. So, so here's the shadow. Maybe, maybe it looks something like this. Here, here's the shadow. Now, as, as the person walks, you might imagine that, that the shadow will, will change. So, so let's think about this really fast. If, if the person is standing really close to the lamppost, so here's the lamppost, and, and, and here's your person, then, then your shadow actually is not big when you're very, very close to the lamppost, right? You, here's, here would be your shadow. But, but when that same person moves a little bit further away, so, so here they move you know, a bit of distance away, what happens to the shadow now? Well, now the shadow is, is quite a bit longer, right? So, so as our person moves, this shadow grows. So, so let's think about that. Let's say the person is walking. We'll make the person walk at a speed of, of two feet per second. I don't know if that's particularly fast. I guess two feet per second, that seems like a nice leisurely pace. My question is, is how quickly is this shadow growing? If, if this is my shadow, how quickly is it growing? Okay, well, now we have a couple of rates that we care about. We know the rate of change of, of how quickly the person is walking, and, and we want to know about the rate of change of the shadow. So, so let's try to put some variables on this and see if we can find a relationship. First of all, let's go ahead and, and say that the person's distance from the lamppost is some distance x. That seems like, like a good name for the distance from the lamppost. Then if that distance is x, notice them walking is increasing that distance. It's increasing the distance from the lamppost. So 2 would just be your change in x over time. It's a positive 2 in this problem because the x is increasing as the person walks away from the lamppost. If they were walking towards the lamppost, it would be negative 2, but since they're walking away from it, it's positive 2. Then, then we have this shadow length. Let's go ahead and call that length s. And, and we want to know how quickly the shadow is growing. Well, that's just going to ask, well, what is the rate of change in s? So our mystery quantity is just the ds dt the change in s over time. Great, we have two quantities, x and s. We, we have one rate of change we know about, the change of x over time. And there's another rate of change we want to know about, the change in s over time. What we need to do then is find some way of relating our x with our s. Can we find some relationship between x and s? Now, now, maybe just looking at this, it's not obvious what that relationship should be. But, but if we're a little bit careful, I think we can see here we have a right triangle. And that right triangle is part of a larger right triangle. And if you remember a little bit from trigonometry or maybe even, even in geometry, you'd remember that, that this right triangle is similar to this larger right triangle. It's not surprising that they both have the same angle here. That's an angle of both the small triangle and of the large triangle. They both have this right triangle in common. If two of the angles are the same, then all three must be the same. So these triangles have all the same angles, and so they're similar triangles. What that means is, is this triangle right here is just a scaled-down version of this bigger triangle. They're proportional to each other. In particular, the lengths of their sides are proportional to each other. We can say that this bottom leg of this triangle, S, is to the bottom leg of the big triangle. Notice that's an X plus an S. 
as the height of this triangle, that's just the height of the person, which is six, is to the height of the lamppost, the, the height of this leg of the large triangle, which is 10. Cross multiplying then gives us that 10s equals 6 times x plus s, so 6x plus 6s. Move that 6x over, uh, move the 6s over, you get 4s equals 6x. And here's a nice relationship between s and x. Of course, you can simplify this. We could say s is equal to 6 fourths, which is 3 halves of x. Now we have our relationship. Okay, so how do we say something about, about, this, about this dx dt and this ds d, um, dt? Well, we know how to play this game at this point. We just need to take the derivative with respect to t. We recognize that s and x are both functions of time. They're changing as time changes. As the person walks, the x and s are both changing. And so we're going to treat those as functions of time, take their derivative, and that will give us that the derivative of s with respect to time is equal to 3 halves the derivative of x with respect to time. But we've already been told that dx dt is 2. And so then we can include ds dt must just be plug 2 in and you get 3. This must just be 3 feet per second. The same units as before. So although the person's only walking at 2 feet per second, the, the shadow is growing at a rate of 3 feet per second. Okay, great. That, that's it. That's, we've solved the problem. But I want us to just be careful to recognize what, what, that we solve the rate at which the shadow is growing. If I had asked a different question, if I had instead asked how quickly is the tip of the shadow moving away from the lamppost, I would be asking a different question. I, I want to know how quickly as, as I walk and the shadow moves, the combination of those two movements, how quickly would the tip of my shadow be moving away from the lamppost? In order to solve that, we need to think that, that there's some new quantity here, some, some new value that is the total distance from the tip of my shadow from the, the lamppost. So, so let's give that some name. I'm going to call it t for total, the total distance. If I instead wanted to solve d, well, t is probably a bad name because that's a variable for time. So, so let me call it something else. Let's, let's just call it, let's call it big, big d for distance. If I wanted the change in distance over time, well, that's the total distance, I need to do something a little bit different. How is big D related to the quantities I already know? Well, big D is just x plus s. So the change in big D over time should just be equal to the change in x over time plus the change in your shadow length over time. And then you can say, well, we already solved that. Our x was given to us, the change in x over time is 2. The change in our shadow length over time is 3. So that total comes out to be 5, and our units are feet per second. Notice what you're saying, if you're walking at 2 feet per second, that means your shadow is going at 3 feet per second, so the tip of your shadow, we're moving away from the lamppost at the combination of those two speeds, which is 5 feet per second. So when you're looking at one of these related rates problems, make sure you're solving for the correct rate of change. Don't, go, don't get confused between the length of the shadow and the distance from the shadow from the beginning of this lamppost. They're two different lengths. And so be really careful to make sure what rate of change are we interested in solving for.